Okay, um, yeah, back on this uh, Avon Les Paul copy, and just holding it up, it's going to suddenly appear very different to what it did before. Um, I've jumped quite a long way ahead on this guitar, so I apologise for not featuring it all on here, but it's been sort of one of those guitars that I've fitted it in between doing everything else. Um, what I've got here is a rewired guitar um, and I've completely shielded all the body inside there, um, all the cavities, which is kind of difficult because it goes through into uh, lots of complex cavities in there, but I've managed to shield all of that off. Um, uh, I, I need to wait for a clip before I can connect up the shielding to the earth, but that's the only thing. Um, what I've got is a completely relacquered back and it's not perfect. It was a mess. Uh, it was down to the wood before, but now we've got hard, solid, long-lasting lacquer on there. Needs a good clean-up. Um, and we've also got some new Wilkinson pickups, an odd set. So right now it's a silver, a chrome and a gold, but hey, we've got some Chinese hardware, which works perfectly well. Uh, we've got some new gold knobs that I bought ages ago, uh, which are working nicely. All the electrics are working. Um, and now all that remains is to put on the, the neck well, it's not all that remains. The next stage is to put on the neck, which I've got here and it's been knocking around for ages now because I refretted it and then I did a basic fret leveling on it. Um, and the next stage is once it's strung and under tension uh, to do a precision fret leveling, but obviously that's not, not gonna happen yet. Um, I'm just gonna roughly line up the position for the time being. We've got a nice, genuine, the original made in Japan, uh, neck plate there. The screws are feeling stiff at the moment to go in because there's been a lot of lacquering going on around those holes so they've they've kind of gummed up as, a, as, as far as lacquer is concerned. The, the holes have seized up a bit. So I'm going to start putting these screws through and hoping they will sort of cut their way back through. Uh, these aren't the greatest screws in the world. But they'll do. Need to keep a lot of pressure on them. Particularly that one. Um, I'm gonna change the, the bit in a moment. Um, whoops, sorry. Uh, but the idea here is we're just gonna quickly check that this is all going on in the right shape, which it is. Um, but uh, yeah, it's starting to come together and hopefully it'll be rescuing or resurrecting a, a nasty old bit of knackered old um, guitar back into the world of the living and of course it's come you know just basically from the, the brink of the dustbin really um, you know that's what that's where this is heading for um, once we get to that stage this had no hardware on it at all pickups were the usual sort of 1980s single coil style things so it was pretty grim uh, so hopefully we'll have brought it back a new lease of life so this is going to need to be done by hand or else we'll risk losing these threads and they're already starting to skip. So um, just generally speaking this will be nicely attached. This is a heavy lump of guitar just like the other one. Uh, maybe a little bit lighter than the K, I'm not sure, but uh, the only thing we're missing on it now is the tuners which I've got to get a set of um, and a nut which I've got some spare. So tuners and nut and uh, we'll be ready to go. I don't have any spare tuners, it's, the, it's unusual for me, so um, we shall see. Anyway, sorry, you were not really looking at anything while I was doing that. Uh, and I need to clear up here. Let's see if I've got an even bigger screwdriver head that will work on this, because these are monstrously... I was undoing that, that was clever Samuel. Uh, 
Yeah, this is obviously uh, got more difficult because of the amount of lacquer I've put on. And you can see it's actually squeezing the lacquer up there as it squeezes hard. Uh, but yeah, a lot of a lot of fresh lacquer on there, which has made this difficult. And in fact, it's, it's actually making this one difficult, verging on undoable. Uh, may have to uh, reconsider this. Neck plates and screws. I'm wondering whether something a little smaller might do this job. Although I'm generally not, not too keen on swapping them out. But we may have to with this one because I think it's, it's so warm it's almost going to resist being worked on. Born over many years of misuse, it doesn't get better the more you use it. That's the um, let's see. Yeah, these are quite a bit smaller. This is um. skinny for my liking and short but they've got better uh, better ends on them I'm just wondering very hard to get the exact right thing on old screws like this Let's see what happens we drop this in does it bite anywhere? Yes, it does. It's not perfect. Uh, that one's knackered as well. That one's knackered. Keep that off to one side. Let's see. I've got two in. I can get three in of the same original width. That'll be fine. See, it's not easy. This one actually is also going to pull this out. This is defunct. You have to look for a lot of downward pressure to get this out successfully. Um, so we've got two in on the back, and then we'll put two slightly lighter ones at the front, and we'll write these off, i.e., chuck them in the bin, because there's no point keeping screws around. Make sure we get the right head for this. I'll do it. That's quite, quite a small thin screw. Uh, it's not really biting that much. I have to try and find a slightly larger one. This one will do. Yeah, that's nice. That will do, and that one. Okay, so we are officially reconnected with our neck. Um, gonna hang up. We beastie up there. See it a second. There we have it. The uh, Avon by Rose Morris. Um, sort of late 1970s, I'd say. To be fret leveled with a banana. My tool. Uh, reinstall after setup. It's the beady eyes amongst you might have noticed. This is where the old katana lives. Unspeakable katana. And. Uh, here we have this beastie. I don't mind that it's silver and gold. 
It's a, it's a hand dog, that's what it's meant to be, but it will play nicely. In. The uh, beauty will be in the neck, and so I need to clean up the back a little bit more. But it's got that lovely old um, model number on the back, which I'm going to keep on because it's quite sort of classy. As you can see, it's a bit of a, a mess in here now, so my next job is to tidy up. Wiring always turns into a, a stinking mess. There's my hand drawn wiring diagram. Um, I could bring out a paper diagram, I could uh, bring out the computer with it on, but I quite like drawing it because it makes me think think it through. Um, so I get to kind of learn it a bit as we go. I'm tired of not knowing when it comes to it, so it's a good thing to, to draw it and learn. Right, so there's, a, there's our Morris. Um, how's it going, Morris? How's things? You all right? Got anything to say to uh, the, the YouTube viewers? Morris? Nothing? No, okay. He was enjoying sitting next to the radiator, which was on a minute ago, but um, it's, uh, it's been turned off, so I think he's feeling a bit hard done by. Right, so, managed to stand up without hitting head. I've got two of these hooks, so this thing can go out of the way over there for a second, and uh, I will see you shortly. Um, what I've got is wiring for this beast, so I've got a, a bought wiring kit for that to make it simpler, um, and I'll take it apart later on and put it together. Hey, over there. Oh, I hear a Morris. I say I hear a Morris because Morris and his sister have been equipped with bells and they're not happy with it. Um, it's taken a day or so and they've uh, they got used to it, I suppose, in, even in a day. Hey, Morris, come up here. Come on. Morris. Hear that? Jingle, jingle, the new sound of Morris. Hello, mister. Mm, you're not quite as friendly anymore, are you? Because you know I put that bell thing on you after taking him to the vets as well. But you'll get used to it, won't you, my boy? He also got a big bag of cat treats yesterday to make up for this horrible jangly thing. I think he got used to it a bit better than his sister did. Uh, she went completely loony. Oh, little dangly bell. No, you'll get used to it. You just won't kill so many animals. Well, that it's more his sister that does that. Um, anyway, just a quickie looky. Here we have Morris. Do that shortly. Morris, you go across there if you can get out of the way of the camera. Um, so, the exciting news for me is I have here an almost ready, uh, well, nearly ready, um, Avon Les Paul copy made in Japan uh, 1970s guitar. And to be honest, there's not a lot left of the original in here. In fact, the only original thing here is the bodywork and the neck. Um, but what I've done is I have, as you've seen along the way, some of it, uh, I've replaced the, or yeah, chucked away the tuners, put new tuners on. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've, um, refretted it completely with nice new jumbo fret wire. I've just fine, done a final, final leveling using uh, my banana tool. Got two brand new gold Wilkinson humbuckers on there, Chinese gold hardware, new knobs, new wiring, and inside, all the way through, um, shielded all the way through with uh, shielding tape and an earth connection to that. So kind of gone the works with it really, uh, and a genuine made in Japan uh, thing on the on the plate here. Also, I don't know if you remember way back, but this guitar was stripped to the wood kind of randomly on the back here. Um, and I've lacquered it again with a thick layer of lacquer um, and kind of done it by hand really. And it's not perfect, but it's, uh, it's good and black and it sort of fits with the condition of the guitar, which is great. So here we have some junk strings on, which I'm going to take off. I'm going to get, see if Morris wants to sit down on a nice stool. There you go, my boy. And um, 
So the time now is to take, come to take these off. And there's a shim, a copper shim, by the way, underneath the uh, neck of this guitar to lift the neck up to meet this bridge. Um, and it's got a, also got a brass nut, which I've just cut all the string slots down to the right height. I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, sandpaper in there just to soften those off because they're quite sharp still. So these strings are now going to get junked or maybe more like taken off and kept for reuse. You can just get them all off. Um, so this is nearing, nearing the end. I think basically all I really need to do with this now is to uh, reprofile these frets and polish them and then we're ready to play and test it out. Um, and that's most of the hard work is done finally and it'll be just another one of those wonderful old beasties. Obviously you know, it'll cost a certain amount, the guitar itself you know, cost something to buy even in the state it was in. Uh, then there's the addition of the parts and then of course there's a the time. So it's, uh, it's not going to be a throwaway price that's for sure but with the precision fret levelling that you've got on this guitar there won't be any others out there that play or sound like it which is the nice appeal of why I like doing this. So I'm just going to chuck that off to the side for a minute. Um, what I want to do now while we're in the game is just to run over the top of all of these frets with the marker pen so we can just get on to the uh, reprofiling bit and that's a bit where I take these flattened frets and reshape them into dome shaped objects um, and after that we then uh, polish them all up and this process keeps the level that we've achieved and uh, then gives us a final product with, with frets that are level, relatively level uh, in the strung playing position and that's really great news because it gives us that extra bit of um, level accuracy or levelling accuracy when we come to play. So um, to do this I need my reprofiling tool or, or um, what do you call it? Fret crowning tool. And I know I've got jumbo frets on here so I'm going to use the jumbo side of this particular tool. Um, and starting at the top, I'm going to, the aim of this is to kind of shave away the, the edge uh, by the flat spot and you end up with a kind of re, reshaped fret. Uh, and the idea is to leave down the middle of the fret the thinnest line of marker pen because when you do that you can tell that you've taken off the flattened area, you've, you've kind of reshaped it from the flat but you've also not taken any material off the top of the frets and that's what you're aiming for. Um, so I'm, as soon as, if, if I do get it so that the marker pen disappears I stop straight away and just move on to the next one. Sometimes when there hasn't been any flattening at all on the fret then you, you hardly have to do anything um, like these. These are just kind of quick once over and stop otherwise we'd be, uh, we'd be going lower on the, on the metal which is something we don't want to do. But this little, keeping this tiny thin strip of pen just lets us know that everything's still relatively level um, and that's what we're aiming for, preserving that levelness. And that's what's going to give us the, uh, the precision of the playing that's going to make this thing play really well. I did this in a two-stage process, um, this guitar, I, and it's probably something I'll do every time when I do a refret. So I refretted this and then I leveled the, uh, the frets in a passive kind of uh, fashion, which means I used a radius block with the neck flat. Sorry, you're missing the action. Use the radius block with the neck set flat to do a, an initial levelling. So that kind of brought everything down to the 12 inch radius. Um, and then this bit is when I did the, the levelling just before this. Uh, it, it really was just an additional tiny precision 
tweak um, because the the, level, the original levelling with the radius block um, was pretty much there actually. Uh, everything, all the notes played really well, so there's, there's no problem at all. Okay. I'm hanging up here. I've also got my uh, fabulous um, reclaimed pots caster or tomcat, as I like to call it, um, built from some really good leftover bits. And um, I'm absolutely thrilled with the way it plays. It's uh, probably a keeper. It's so good. Um, it's a hard tail, so it doesn't it doesn't kind of emulate the Dave Gilmore. Though it looks a bit like Dave Gilmore's black strap. Uh, it doesn't have the tremolo function, and that's that's just a a factor of you know, what happened to the guitar in its previous life. And uh, the tremolo was pretty much destroyed. And in, in destroying itself, it kind of wore or kind of ripped apart the guitar. So this is a that's a sort of robot <laughs> put together from bits. Um, but the good thing about it is, is it plays beautifully. And actually, interestingly, I've got another guitar here that I'm working on this weekend, uh, which belongs to Colin, and it's a uh, modern Fender, modern player Stratocaster, and this plays as well as that one. Um, and his plays really well uh, to begin with. It's not that bad. Um, he, he's not comfortable with it at the moment, so I'm going to improve the action and the playability. But uh, I'm really pleased from my perspective. I'm thrilled to notice that my parts caster strap uh, feels and sounds as good as a 350 quid uh, um, modern player telecaster so that's a, that's a nice outcome right um, I'm going to do a sanding thing here it gets really noisy so I'll probably say goodbye to you until it's done um, but just really to, to let you know what I am doing I'm going to sand this down I'm going to do a little bit more masking off Sorry, it's very noisy. I'm going to sand down the frets now, and I'm going to go from uh, excuse me, 600 grit paper uh, to 1200. Then um, I'm going to go to the micro mesh papers and do a series of those, which run from 1500 grit right the way to 12,000, um, and that's kind of almost just polishing by that stage. So I'm going to polish all of these frets up like that. And once they're done, uh, we'll take off the masking tape, give it all a clear up, clean up, um, put the strings back on, and then we'll be in playing mode and try, trying it out. There may be some tiny tweaks left with the, uh, the nut, but I think I've got it pretty, pretty much okay. So now comes the 600, 1200 on the you need a ruler to cut this up. I'm running out of space now. Okay. I'll do a tidy up before I get onto Colin's guitar this evening. Um, but it's very nice, very satisfying. There's been three black guitars recently that I've built or repaired or re thingied reconditioned. Um, one of them was the Yamaha SE 350 and then there's this strap over my shoulder and then there's this Avon and to be honest the Avon was, well most of them were knackered so it's very satisfying to have made all of them play and they don't look fantastically pretty all of them, you know they're still very definitely worn and used. Um, oops. But they play really, really well, so that's that's the most satisfying part of it. Um, so in a way, they're kind of they play better than the amount I could probably sell them for because they're not the prettiest things in the world. But you know, having said that, there may be there may be people who come and play them and will uh, get how good they are to play. And that's the the nice part of it. Okay, so I've got my two grades of sandpaper and my micro mesh standing by and uh, I won't bore you with it, I'll switch off. Um, 
start with the 600, four of those, two of those, 1200s, and then I'll run through the whole set of micromesh. And then once that's done, I'll come back when it's uh, time to take off the paper and restring the guitar because that's, really, that's the payoff time. And all the hard work's been coming towards and It's been going on for weeks, this, uh, this guitar. Months, in fact. So it'll be a pleasure to get it working. As I say, there's almost nothing original of, about it anymore, but that's, that's a nice thing. So I'll see you in a little bit. Well, here we have it. The completed Avon 1970s Made in Japan, Avon by Rose Morris, uh, Les Paul copy. Just missing the um, truss rod uh, cover at the moment, which I've got. It's got a brass nut, which fits very nicely. Uh, gold tuners and um, gold hardware. I've done a bit of filling out all of these little gaps here with foam. Um, just got to make sure it fits in and doesn't touch the strings. But just to shut up those bloody spring rattles that these things have which drive me mad and you could do it plasticine if you wanted but it's kind of dirtier and messier so I've just poked it in with some foam which will stop the damn things uh, but it does need to be pressed right in or cut to the precise size if you want to avoid pressing the strings but that's fine it's only on the front side it matters um, and this fits in quite nicely um, it's all clear uh, yeah so Wilkinson humbuckers, uh, gold ones, hot humbuckers, and uh, you know, a weather-worn body, as you'd expect. Um, bit of repairs here and there, but uh, renewed electronics, all basically needing a little bit of a, a scratch remover polish still, but um, you know, that's about all it's going to get from here onwards. The neck could do with a shim slightly in that direction but it's fine still playable um haven't i just put the strap buttons on as well so uh yet to give it a play music comes from somewhere yeah nice uh, strap buttons not exactly period um, but pretty strong, that's what I wanted more than anything else. So it's quite a heavy lump of Les Paul coffee, but it's uh, along with this, um, the other one I've got in house, and along with this strap, these two kind of reclaimed things, great really love guitars, you know, saved from the bin really. Uh, in the, both cases, this was just spare parts, this was something that was just such a piece of crap when I, when I got it. So the fact that it now plays and you know, you could enjoy gigging with it. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more tweaking on the action, um, but it's all there, okay?